My name is Ted Sambo, it's Ted for Edward, actually, and uh, I was born in the United Kingdom in London, I was one of ten. My oldest brother was actually born in Canada, and um, if they'd have stayed, I would have been too. But anyway, that's the way things turn out. My parents actually had spent time in Canada because my father in the First World War went to um, Europe. He was in France as a soldier, met my mother in England. They went back to Canada and then um, perhaps through difficulties of finding work, um, returned to England, which in a way they often regretted. For the, um, but couldn't do anything about it because the um, times were tough in England too. So we um, were rather, let's say we were quite poor family, but everyone else was too anyway. And we weren't as badly off as the uh, people in North America and Canada. The Great Depression hit those people even harder than what we had. Now I have poor eyesight, I'm myopic as a short sight. I went to a special school and this is really how I came to enter the piano business because um, it was considered that um, if you had poor eyesight, you had good hearing. And of course that isn't so. So there was a scholarship available and I eventually got the scholarship to attend a polytechnical institute which had a program of three years. And that encompassed mainly piano tuning, but of course, um, uh, some repairs and regulating general maintenance. We did play a piano work and we did some pipe organ work as well. That uh, happened about the time that the Second World War uh, began and uh, I was 16 when the war broke out in 1939. Was history tells everybody. We started getting bombed in uh, 1940 and um, we had air raids for 74 nights in a row. But um, I continued to go to school and um, graduated very early in 1941. There was a department store with 200 pianos who wanted the more tune. My instructor recommended me for the job. It was strictly a part-time thing to get all these tunings done. Worked pretty steadily at these tunings. I got them all done in six weeks and then I had arranged to go back to the Polytechnic and get work in their repair shop. But um, they were going to pay me less than what it cost me to get out of town to. So instead I volunteered for the civil defense and spent um, the rest of the war in that. And uh, our job was to um, dig out bomb victims. During the quieter times we uh, cleared the rubble from uh, uh, wrecked buildings. So after the war, I uh, did try to work on my own, but it didn't work. There was the prevailing uh, way of doing business in uh, England, that people would go to the dealer and never consider an individual. The dealers all ran the service department and so oh, I tried that for quite a while 
and I actually got no work whatsoever. So that was um, a bit discouraging, so I had to get a job. I worked for a, a large dealer, averaging five tunings a day. These were all selling pianos like hotcakes after the war. And uh, there were no new pianos at the, uh, immediately after the war. All the new pianos were for export only. The regular people who still had their pianos meant that there were plenty of things to, uh, that needed fixing. They were using me mainly to look after the complaints. So although I was the youngest of the uh, tuning staff, I got um, all these uh, jobs. I think it was because mainly I was able to uh, empathize with the customers fairly well. And getting the pianos fixed, well, it had to be done, but it was more or less secondary to how you did it, how you uh, were able to um, listen to people, which was all it really took, was to listen. And I think that's very important. Anyway, uh, Paris had always wanted to come back to Canada and uh, so we saved and saved and saved and finally we uh, set sail in one of the Cunard steamships and so we embarked in 49, 1949 finally ending up in London, Ontario which is now my home with all the returning vets and they wanted pianos and pianos were selling people were almost lining up for them so I walked into Heinzmann's they said could we ever use use you you know I got a job for the sum of thirty dollars a week within 18 months I was doing all the local consulate work and that kind of grew and grew and for a while I spent some time in the Heinzmann factory as a foreman and unfortunately the company was hit, having very bad times and things weren't good. So I left there and went on my own, which I'd always wanted to do anyway. I finally got to do what was the leading festival in Canada, the Stratford. Along with that um, eventually came my an association with Glenn Gould. Uh, I did an audition tuning for him and uh, he approved it and so I tuned all his uh, uh, concerts in Stratford. Actually I had done one tuning before and it was at, in London at the University of Western Ontario and it was his first engagement um, the first professional engagement actually outside of Toronto. That was in 1951. So it wasn't until 1960 that I was actually doing the uh, Stratford Festival. And, but I did tune for him in Detroit one time and I always recollect him uh, showing up just a few minutes ahead of of uh, the time he was due to play. As usual, he soaked his hands in very, very hot water. And he asked, he had a tiny scratch on his finger, and he uh, asked if he could have some iodine. He didn't mind the blood. He said he could have blood all over the keyboard, but he was terrified of uh, germs. The stagehands, they brought out little square blocks with a rim around them about an inch and a half thick and hoisted up each leg one at a time and raised the piano. They brought out his very disreputable chair which had been cut so low that it was almost down to the rungs. It was uh, just an old wooden chair that his father had cut down 
and he'd put levelling bolts on the legs and uh, hinges so it could be folded up for transportation. And I remember the was uh, getting noisier and noisier each of these revelations. And then the third time the audience was almost in a ferment when they brought out his um, glass of mineral water and put that on the base in key block. But when he played those opening notes, the moment there, it was dead silent and the audience was absolutely mesmerized. So I bought um, a Detroit News the next mo uh, morning to read the review and the reviewer said the Canadian pianist Glenn Gould had played flawlessly in fact, um, except for his humming, which sounded as though a large black fly had escaped in the auditorium. And uh, which I guess was fair comment, although I've known many of the artists I tuned for who um, who hummed, though admittedly he was louder than any of them. I used to attend all his rehearsals uh, for his Sunday concerts. Uh, Sunday afternoons were extremely formal. They used to uh, fire a cannon and uh, that would open the door and let the audience in to the uh, lobby, but they didn't let them into the theatre until the um, until uh, the exact time when it was two o'clock. Uh, one morning at rehearsal, he asked me if. Um, I would go with him to uh, the house that he had rented and he had an old chickering brand, a desperate old piano, but he loved it. Uh, been using the soft pedal and it was stuck over, the keys were stuck over. And it was a very hot um, August and of course he was dressed in his long winter coat and his hat and his gloves. And on the way over, he complained about the air conditioning in the theater. And he said, I, I don't know how the actors stand it, but then actors are strange people. And it was all I could do <laughs> to stand, to keep a straight face. <laughs> but anyway, it turned out that um, uh, the key bed was sort of dirty so it just took a few minutes to clean out and it worked but then he complained he said you've changed the tone and the hammers are so worn they look like the teeth of combs and I was amazed because often they would stick in the strings if they're like that and I was surprised that they weren't they hadn't anyway I thought oh what next <laughs> and, and and then it occurred to me that he'd been playing it with the soft pedal over and started to wear the hammers in a different spot. So I explained that to him and I said, I'm, I'm willing to file the hammers and get rid of those. I pointed out the, uh, uh, these deep, um, deep, deep notches in the hammers. And uh, I said, either that or you can just play it in again. So he was terrified to have anything done. And so I, it ended up that that's what he opted for, was to do it.